Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm from the Netherlands, a small country, but you're a small country too, where I am for the first time. I didn't understand a word what Yuri was saying, but thank you for the invitation of coming here. But that will be likewise perhaps when I give my talk in Dutch. Uh, for the quality assurance part, I, 10 years ago, I made a report with the National Cancer League on quality of cancer care in the Netherlands. And there was an enormous diversity and thereafter we started the Dutch first colorectal audit and thereafter all kinds of audits in order to give feedback on the quality and improvement. So I will also talk about okay, the um, European Society of Surgical Oncology, but I'd like to draw your attention to the Lancet Oncology Commission on Global Cancer Surgery where we concluded, and that was last November, that uh, currently we have some 16 million new cases of cancer, of which 80% need surgery. By 2030 worldwide, it will be 45 million. And we as estimate that less than 25% of these patients receive adequate quality controlled surgery. So a lot can be improved. Uh, in every country in the world. For ESSO, it is to, to support its members in science and practical surgical oncology with a vision to represent the most established cancer treatment because still surgery is the most important treatment of cancer. And to this end, ESSO develops standards of care of cancer patients, core values, education, quality, and an ultimate also qualification. These are the core competence that a surgeon should have. Commitment, competence, and continuity, the three C's, by which he or she can have leadership in multidisciplinary care. And there are other C's like courage, confidence, creativity, and communication that are important. But as opposed to the other members of the multidisciplinary team, we must have skills. And we must be aware of those who say, I can do that too, without proper knowledge and training. And of course, in a multidisciplinary team, judgment is more, most important. Decisions are more important than incisions. And this should all be based on audit outcome. Quality assurance is mandatory in the good functioning of a multidisciplinary team. This is the leadership of ESSO. So this is... Uh, Graham Poston, I will give his talk later on because he was prevented because he had a patient who had an emergency, Peter Naredi, the current uh, ECHO president, and uh, Santi Moreno Gonzalez, the incoming ESSO president, when we were in a retreat in the ICE Hotel in uh, Sweden. So discipline in the multidisciplinary team is also very important. We have to have some guidelines and listen to those and have to ha give feedback of those who do not obey. I will give you a few examples of trials I organized in the Netherlands that changed outcome. The Dutch cancer, cancer trial was organized in the end of the 80s when surgeons still treated a lot of benign gastric ulcers. And uh, we did a trial to look at the value of the Japanese Asiatic extended lymphadenectomy. So what was we, uh, in this trial, we randomized 711 gastrectomies in 80 participating hospitals with only 2.2 cancer gastrectomies per hospital per year. Pretty low, that was also the, the complaint, the criticism from Japan. But I had a Japanese surgeon, Mitsuru Sasako, who later became the, uh, uh, the, the head of the surgical, of the, the cancer society in, uh, in Japan. And there were always, with this extended lymphadenectomy, supervising surgeons present. So we had instruction videos, we had booklets, and we did not have the centralized role, but we sent the surgeon to the different hospitals. So D1 was the, uh, with the nodes adjacent to the stomach, our current oper uh, our standard operation. 
D2 with the branches to the celiac axis, D3 nodes along the aorta, and the most problematic seem to be station number 10 in the splenic hilus. Often when surgeons removed it, they had a laceration of the spleen, so subsequent splenectomy, and did not convert to a total gastrectomy, and the leakage rate as a result of that uh, increased significantly, and therefore also the mortality rate. So we had difficulties in coping with some of the complications, and that had to do with the non-centralized aspect. Initially, the results were not very good at all. There was 6% difference in favor of our standard operation, the limited operation. So it was 4 versus 10% operative mortality. But later on, survival changed in favor of the extended lymphadenectomy. And you can see in the long term, 15 years follow-up, we had 48% death of gastric cancer after the limited resection and 37% after the more extensive dissection. So we concluded, and that was for the first time, outside of Japan, outside of the Asiatic world, that such a randomized trial with quality control was uh, performed that the do dissection should be recommended a standard surgical approach in resectable uh, gastric cancer, but in centers with experience and high volume. So when we look at the curative role of surgery, you have very early cases and you have late cases with metastatic disease, the role of D2 gastrectomy is limited because it's only when certain lymph nodes are positive that a more extensive resection is worthwhile. In the others, it could be de detrimentous. But look at the world. This is the intergroup study of the United States. They claimed D2 gastrectomy to have part of this trial, only 10% of the patients had a D2 gastrectomy. And they looked if chemoradiation therapy was beneficial thereafter, and it was. So it's now standard of care in the United States to give post-operative chemoradiation therapy in lymph node positive gastric cancer. This is Japan. Similar staged patients, similar staged patients, surgery only, to look at the value of adjuvant chemotherapy with an oral drug called S1. But look also the difference in survival of the surgery only group. And that is 20 versus 60%. An enormous difference. And this is of course really standardized D2 dissection. So it makes a hell of a difference where you're operated and how experienced the team is. And this additional benefit of chemoradiation therapy or uh, chemotherapy alone is very limited. We did an observational study in the Netherlands to look in a center which standardized gave chemoradiation therapy uh, after D1 resection. And you can see in comparison with this randomized trial that after a D2, chemoradiation therapy reduced local regional recurrences as expected and also uh, had an effect on survival, but not after D2 dissection. So D1 limited lymphadenectomy gives a role for additional chemoradiation therapy, but D2 not. So adjuvant chemoradiation therapy has survival recurrence benefit over D1, but not over D2 surgery. But this is retrospective analysis. And we just completed a prospective randomized trial to prove if this is really true. About volume, so the, the disadvantage of this trial was that it was performed in all low volume hospitals. We started Eureka, and I will talk later about it, and we looked at differences in outcomes for, of esophageal and gastric cancer surgery across Europe, the Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, and England, who had good registry of these patients. And here you can see the effect of hospital volume and mortality in esophagectomy and gastric, more than 40, more than 21. And why more than 21? Because we do not really have the very high volume centers like in Asia. So the more you do, the less mortality and also the less morbidity. But there's differences between the high volume centers. Again, 30 day mortality, Sweden here in both esophagectomy and gastrectomy is the lowest, yet 
is not the centers with the highest volume in Europe. <clears throat> so it is more than only volume, it's also the quality of the team that evaluates the patients. So the conclusion of this was, in the British Journal of Surgery, difference in outcome by, between several European countries could not be explained by differences in hospital volumes to understand these differ differences with reliable case mix adjustment, a uniform European upper gastrointestinal cancer audit with recorded of standard data is warranted. And that's what we did. We started the upper GI, uh, uh, Eureka upper GI audit. These are now the two trials. This is an ongoing trial, and this is a trial that uh, we con uh, conducted and closed last year and will be reported at ESCO. Standard preoperative in Europe is preoperative chemotherapy, then more or less D2 surgery, and randomized preoperatively the radio chemotherapy or the chemotherapy, so the American versus the European way. And we called it the critics trial. It was run through my department, and uh, we randomized uh, uh, almost 1,000 patients. And initially, because the results of the D1, D2 study were not yet yet known, we said you need to remove more than 50 lymph nodes with no splenectomy. But here you can see again, now we, uh, only since 2010, we, we uh, had uh, volume reduction, so we had centralization of gastric cancer surgery, that initially, despite the designated 15 lymph nodes, we uh, had uh, a number of hospitals who removed less than 15 lymph nodes, despite dedicate, dedicated surgeons. And only at the end of the trial, we had uh, a very good compliance to the quality indicators we, we had. A problem, and I come back to that later, is that the population is getting older uh, in, in, uh, in, in Europe. And that's the reason when you have major surgery, like gastric cancer surgery, the compliance, mainly post-operative, is low. And therefore, we should give more preoperative treatment than post-operative treatment. Because when you had chemotherapy, surgery, are recovering with all the uh, nutritional problems you have, and then again get chemoradiation therapy or chemotherapy is quite a problem. So optimal tailored surgery adapted to the elderly patient is crucial in a high volume audited center. Preoperative selective Radio chemotherapy results in better compliance, better response evaluation, better tolerance, more R0 resections, about 10% more R0 resections, and overtreatment, of course, in case of preoperative treatment. Postoperative therapy is for high risk of local regional relapse, so especially with positive margins, and high risk for distant metastasis with high lymph node uh, burden. So we have seen changes in cancer treatment, empirical to more stratified and now to more personalized with reduction of under and over treatment. Quality assurance, again, is very important and it should be discussed in a multidisciplinary team. Also an example of rectal cancer. The six major goals in the treatment of a patient with rectal cancer is local control, distant control, long-term survival, preservation of the anal sphincter, of the nerves and maintenance or improvement of quality of life. I coordinated a co fully quality controlled randomized clinical trial nationwide again on the introduction of TME surgery. TME surgery standardized again with supervision and surgeon had to do an exam more or less. Uh, five operations under supervision with control of the pathologist that you had a good specimen and then you could participate, and we had video workshops and instruction in the operating theater. And this was randomized to short-term radiation therapy, uh, developed more or less also in Sweden with my friend uh, Bengt Gilimelius and Lars Palman, shortly before the uh, surgery was performed. And here you can see the 10-year results of this trial that still TME had 11% local recurrence and radiation therapy reduced the local recurrence rate to 5%. Now, currently, we have 4% local recurrence rate overall with our audit in the Netherlands, with an enormous reduction now 
uh, in uh, radiation therapy. What we found uh, was that the lower tumors did not benefit from radiation therapy. And the reason for that was too much positive margins. And what we found in an analysis of 1,400 patients we published in Lancet Oncology is that when you correct and look only at patients who had a curative resection, radiation therapy was beneficial all over. But when there were positive margins, radiation therapy did not help. There was a reduction in local recurrence, but not significant so. And here you can see, for instance, the abdominal perineal resection, a large operation. Uh, we looked at the Swedish rectal cancer, the TME trial, the German trial, the ERDC, and the Polish rectal cancer trial, that both in local recurrence as well as in survival, significantly worse when an APR was performed. And the reason for that was two and a half times more chance of having a circumferential positive margin so that it was not a curative resection and we learned radiation therapy does not help in positive margins. So we have to either change our uh, uh, operative strategy to do more wider excisions or have other measures and we'll come back to that later. I would like to draw your attention also to this. You can see that the, the use of radiation therapy reduced the cancer death by 10% because of the radiation therapy. So 51 to 40% reduction of cancer death by radiation therapy. But an increase also of death of other causes, mainly cardiovascular, by radiation therapy. So it is not harmless. You have to use this tool on indication and not uh, very broad. So we're now very active in reducing indications for radiation therapy. And one of them is improvement in staging, that we know better beforehand what is the stage of the tumor. This, by the way, is a picture from our university library. We have the oldest university of the Netherlands from the 14th century. And that is MRI. And here you can see the tumor and the circumferential margin clearly free. And here you can see an involved circumferential margin needing preoperative treatment and downstaging of the tumor. So this can be operated right away without radiation therapy, and this certainly not. We also did a randomized trial thereafter on the use of adjuvant chemotherapy. And you can see this was together again with Sweden. There was no significant difference at all of adjuvant chemotherapy. A similar study performed in Italy with Folfox, and this was only with capsidabine, capsidabine proved the same. So we published in Lancet a meta-analysis of all trials, all negative for adjuvant chemotherapy and rectal cancer. Stage four rectal cancer. So locally advanced with metastasis. We did a trial stage, uh, phase two, giving these patients short-term radiation therapy uh, and uh, Xelox chemotherapy. You can forget we do not use it anymore, bevazuzumab, and thereafter surgery. What we found in this group of locally advanced metastatic tumors was pathologic complete remission in 26% of specimens. And for me, that was astonishing high. So, and of course, the problem, I call it a tragedy and a triumph. When you call a patient and explain postoperatively, you have a stoma, you still have some complications. But the good thing is the pathologist did not find a single cancer cell. Of course, you can expect that the patient will say, do I really need my stoma then and all my other complications? And that's a good question. And therefore, Las Palma and I myself organized the Rapido trial, which will be concluded this week, with 920 patients included. So locally advanced rectal cancer, quality controlled, five times five grade, K-pox, response evaluation, and all patients are still operated here. And here is standard chemo radiation therapy, response evaluation, and surgery. So that is now an upcoming clinical problem that you have a patient with a tumor on MRI, which you can see on endoscopy. And a few months later, nothing is left. 
And isn't there then a possibility of non-operative treatment? And that brings me to Eureka, European Registration of Cancer Care. What I already mentioned for upper GI, also for quality assurance, looking at patterns of care in Europe. So it is key is quality assurance, visibility of this quality assurance, but also developing international databases with feedback, e-learning, consensus meeting, and uh, also we have prospective online databases available. So we have Eureka colorectal, upper GI, breast, pancreas, liver, and this is still under construction, prostate and lung. And this is the database. We have now 700 patients in this database. What we need to learn about the watch and wait rather than watch and worry strategy by including all patients treated according to a non-operative treatment in rectal cancer. So from Sao Paulo, Harbour Gama, Memorial Sloan Kettering, European centers, we have now, uh, we will report that at the European Society of Surgical Oncology Congress with approximately 1,000 patients. And we will learn from the different schemes, what were the mistakes made, what kind of follow-up, etc. A similar prospective database was launched by Ricardo Odicio, the current president of the European Society of Surgical Oncology, uh, with Isabel Rubio on an international nipple sparing mastectomy registry. So from Eureka Breast, which is called Inspire. So we have seen the core values, the leadership, research and innovation. And uh, so the goals is to become a main educational platform for surgical oncology, stimulate optimal quality in surgical oncology, and to become a major partner of all specialists in all disciplines and organizations in Europe. To establish surgical oncology as a core specialty in optimal care for cancer patients, to facilitate availability of quality multidisciplinary guidelines, and establish general uh, awareness and acceptance of added value for SO members. Uh, and here you can see that this organization is growing. At this time, I was president and increased, and thereafter it was increased up to almost 4,000 members now internationally. So the activities is uh, science, congresses. We have the European Journal of Surgical Oncology, partnership with other societies, and Eureka is also a major part, and that's the reason that I'm still in the board to conduct this quality assurance initiative in ESSO. And clinical research, of course, we want high quality, patient-centered research with proactive surgeons that work together uh, internationally. So two pr pilot projects are on liver metastasis, and that is the speciality of Graham Poston, a collaborative project with the EURDC towards development of a prospective database for patients with advanced colorectal liver metastasis that initially were irresectable and now are resectable. What are the criteria, again, for making these patients resectable? So it's all about leadership in multidisciplinary care, working together in the multidisciplinary teams with the medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, radiologists, pathologists. And uh, so, we actively contribute as an ESSO organization to the European Cancer Organization, which is the umbrella organization, and to the new vision to improve outcome for all cancer patients in, in Europe. And of course, that fits very well with this Eureka uh, vision. Working together with other disciplines is the only way to secure a better future for patients with cancer. We also are committed to, to the Rare Cancer Initiative, and uh, we have several workshops and uh, uh, e e uh, distribution about this. And, uh, to, uh, and we have the European Journal of Surgical Oncology as our scientific journal. Editor-in-chief is Ricardo Odicio. And uh, an another very important part is education and training through fellowships, courses, masterclasses, e-learning, the European Board of Surgery, examinations, the core curriculum, and uh, here you can see the core curriculum is described and published in the EGSO, describing what a surgical oncologist is and what it should know 
and how it should uh, f function in a multidisciplinary team. The courses and masterclasses can all be found on the website, and I do an annual course on surgical anatomy, hands-on, with a teacher uh, uh, and pupil ratio of one to one, so you have one surgeon and one pupil, usually an, an, uh, a junior surgeon or an elder resident, where we have a really hands-on course on cadaveric examinations, and we uh, will give all the participants, uh, before they come to the course, 3D videos so that they can prepare well uh, for it. Then you have the European Board of Surgery qualifications, professional examinations, the level of up-to-date knowledge based on the core curriculum, uh, organized with the uh, Union Européenne Médicinale Spécialiste, the OEMS, and uh, acc accredited, and the next exam will be in September. And then we have the fellowships. We also have an exchange program with the United States, with the American Society of Surgical Oncology, which is funded through both societies, where you can work in major centers for some time as an observer, but, uh, and we have live course educational grants. And we have, formerly in, uh, in Switzerland and now in the Netherlands, a method in clinical cancer research workshop, which is uh, uh, available for all medical specialists to develop further research protocols. So when you have an ID, just two pages outline, and it will be uh, developed to a full clinical trial protocol in a week with such a course. So e-learning is also work in progress. We have an, a number of e-learning and webcasts, videos on surgical procedures and online case studies. And there is, a, uh, a, and I will leave, of course, this, uh, pub this presentation. There are a number of benefits to be a member and you can learn it all from the ESSO website. So, a number of studies like RAPIDO, like the CRITICS study, will be presented at the European Society of Surgical Oncology at a Congress in Krakow, Pol Poland, and there you will find all the interactions. So, we, uh, we welcome very much the uh, Estonian Society of Surgery to be part, and you can also be a cluster part, so as a society as a whole, to be involved in all the activities and all the feedback, and especially all the quality assurance activities. Whenever you have a registry, you're able to participate in part of the analysis. We have a team of people making the appropriate analysis and looking at patterns of care that may differ significantly within Europe and giving feedback and uh, interaction how we can improve further. I thank you very much for your attention. And that's the final remark, the future of surgery will not be like the past, like Darwin. Not the strongest, but the most adaptive to change will survive. Innovation of surgery is not to pave the way for something new, but, but for something better. And there's only one stakeholder, our patient. And things are changing with our ever elderly population and new techniques like the uh, robotic surgery and even non-operative strategies. <laughs>